dear Prime Minister, dear High Representative, honorable guests, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It is a great honor for me to welcome you in Tbilisi at this very important conference uh, where we would jointly express our adherence towards advancing gender equality and women's rights as an integral part of sustainable development. The year 2015 is a watershed year for global, regional and national developments in the field of gender equality and women's empowerment. In this context, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Georgia initiated the, to host this international high-level conference, achieving the gender equality challenges and opportunities in the Euro <clears throat> European neighborhood policy region, aimed at bringing governmental and intergovernmental officials, parliamentarians, civil society and academia representatives from all over the world to discuss the existing challenges we face in the European neighborhood uh, uh, policy uh, in the European neighborhood policy region even when there is a difference between countries on historic economic political and geopolitical term i do believe that women well-being and empowerment should be and are equally important to all of us Therefore, I hope that this conference will serve as a good platform for dialogue to find out the ways and opportunities in a process of fulfilling our common goal, achieving the gender equality. We are hosting the conference with full realization of the importance granted to the issues discussed by the European neighborhood policy and the EU in general, as reaffirmed by the recently adopted framework for transforming the lives of girls and women through EU external relations. Countries that have democratic aspirations must be oriented on social inclusiveness of all people without prejudice and discrimination. Here I should stress that Georgia's path towards building a democratic state goes through women's full and equal participation in politics, economy, social development, and this is a shared vision of my male and female colleagues of the cabinet. However, we acknowledge that this is not enough and more has to be done for the achievement of substantive gender equality. So women in Georgia and around the world face no barriers to exer exercise their human rights and freedoms. By signing the association agreement with the EU, Georgia has shared a number of commitments among them improving legislation and policy making in the field of gender equality, transposition of EU directives on gender issues and ensuring enhanced labor rights for women. Certain steps and efforts have been undertaken uh, by the government of Georgia to fulfill these tasks in close cooperation with international community and civil society groups and we are going to continue all our reform efforts in this spirit. While we believe that we are the generation who should put an end to women's discrimination on the basis of their gender identity and uphold women's rights and gender equality principles. And I believe that with our joint efforts, we will succeed in this common endeavor. Here I would like to remind you the words of a great man and a great politician, Nelson Mandela, to which I strongly agree with, as long as outmoded ways of thinking prevent women making a meaningful contribution to society, progress will be slow. As long as the nation refuses to acknowledge the equal role of more than half of itself, it is doomed to failure. To this end, I would like to express gratitude and thank the EU High Representative for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy, Vice President of the European Commission, Federica Mogherini, and the UN, in particular the UN Women, UNDP, and UNFPA for their support and partnership in organizing this conference. 
Now let me give the floor to the Prime Minister of Georgia and wish all of us the productive participation and contribution to the conference. Thank you. Okay, Sam, with Koylas. Through Paso Calbaton of the Batonebo. Chem to his steady party, we are Rom Sagartol Maspinzlops, Aseti Magali Donis, Sart Shores of Conferences, Romilis Gani Hilos, Gender Ulitana Soros Politicas, Europol Samezoblosh. Memida Piro Shimalobaga Daukado, Koylas, Hardacherisada, Partner Robis Twist, Me Gansa Utramalobas Hukti Pira, the Devrukal Shiris. Sagar Ulter Tobis at Usartobis Politicis, Umagles Armad Genels, Commissis, Vice President Calbaton, Pederica Mogherinis, Agartu Gairos Calta Organsias, Gairos Ganwitarvis Programmas, the Gairos Mosaklevis Pons, Asomemida, Mivesam Chuens, Padusemu Calbaton of Stumreps, Melheda Ramden Ministers, Eurocal Shiridan, Quellas, Melpicrobe Sarizalans Armad Ebul Conference, Vinadan, Miam Darbash Hedau, Zalan Beur. Lamas da Gaulian Kalbatonis. As a rule of Mogesanovit. Memida Gitrat Roma Initiatives, Autor Gachlaut, Opili Sagros of the Ministry, Kalbaton, Tamar Virchur, Melitz, Asaway, Chuan Gustrem, the Masmalo Bagadau Hado, Am Conferences in its Rebis Twist. Get with Rom Genderuli, Tanasor of Stemaze, Michelo Pira, the Chem Twisaris, Uagres at Michelovani. Mogesanima from Kalibis, the Katsebis. Tana Soroba, Chuan Twis Aras of this damned garak, it was Nishni Squish, Pira that Mesor Dam Tradici with Gawizarde, that Quen Imope with Queranashi Romilis, Quelaze, Didma Muazronim, Jerky the Metormet Saugunish, Tuarum Kali da Katsi, Aristana Sori, Amitomatsari Chem to Zalim Tunul, Kalebis Mimart, is discriminatia. Da is Zala Dobro, Mesa Titmis, Oval Driurat, Vat the Bit, Tel Sopliosh. Dara Sebos Garemoiba, Romita Chiz Leba, Miss Gamart Leba. Sorry, Damit of Chuen, Huelani, Katsebis the Kalebits, Tana Sorobis, and Haris no Vidget. Rata Quela Damias, De Damitsaze, Mietz Tana Bari, the Taus Pali, Ganwitarbis, Shesa Zebluba. Nam do Znilz Armos at Guinea, Chem to Srom, Chem Schorupt, Soplius at Gairos, Mholz Levan de Limonat Sembit. Was that scrammed million Gogunas? Army at Sasaskologan Lebis Asholib. Shvida Samot Totmet Millionis, Rdas Rulicalis or Mesamets, Asevi Army at Sagan Lebis Asholib. Modi Daupit Ramgam Uitsua, Isrom, Soplius, Haribi Mosakleobis, Samus Dati Procentiari Soled Kali. Rogurum da Wiskol is at Sam Aroshi, that's overly Sami Kalidan. Erti Ganistis, Zala Dobas Genderunishnit. That Zali and Sota is at the Kali Romasats, Shes of Sunari, Ibzolos. The Shes Holos are Sebuli, Realoba. Pekin is Mokmede, but a platform is Otisris Mimo here with Stan Ahmad, Mukha Timis are on Progress Yaris, Zalian Neli, Sinsularis. The problem is not big, not big, but the main standard is not big. We are talking about the gender of the Tanasorobis, the Kalta, the Gogona, the Uplevis, the Sweet Agro, the Gazar Dili, the Informer Bulobis, the Active Room Harder, the Chiris Kalobit, the Progressive Idea of the Sagno Big Name of Watch. We are talking about the USA and the Mass Room, Tito Makuera and Amikis Rawal de Buleba, the Shiasrulos, the Pekinese Mokmede, the Platform is Motronebi, the Gardamis, the Gairos. Seurma Quernem, Mizna Daisaches, Urieta Soldat is this twist, Miaxion Principes, Planeta, Urmuzdati Urmuzdaz. Pirat Meutrium Messari, Salian Abisi Urmizani, Magram Geranum is Mixeva, Salsebis is Rebellia. Memida Sevgit Catrum, Pirat Meda Chem Tauruba, Quella Pres Gawaget of Timis to Strom Sagartoloshi, Am Mizans, Miwaxiot. Damis Miss Apuzos, Mazlus. Is from Bolots Lepshi. Chuan Arce Biti Progressivos. Shash and Chuan Mugat Adam is full of the strategia. That's a Samukun Gigma. Romilis Covela, Sart Shurso, Standards Agmago Pilips. 
Agreto miuget anti discrimination kanuni gasutels. Chuen kheli mozeret khatatsi namdek. Zala dobis da ujakshi zala dobis akwetis da prevenci shesakhep Europe sabchos konvencias. Ase vichuen gadaud git. Nishuen nabije bi politika shi khatats arumat gino bis gazredis mi martule bi da me imedi maksrom chuen yez zali smeva isakhepa mumalitlis sa parlamento archone bishit. Chuen tuis surpaso me gobre bu gadam tro dimishu me baus. چون از پارتنی اروپا، اروپیس کاوشیتان در رژیونی سوکو کنپتان، روملا بیس اروپا سامز زبلو پلیتیکا ساتاره بین، از پارتنی اروپا ام قربا سایر تو غیره بوله بیس. دا اروپولی سامز زبلو پلیتیکی سر سبی تی اینسترومنت بیس. چون رات مونده گواق چونی خالقیس، اودی دستیم خرد اچیرا، اروپا کاوشیتان اینتگراتی ساک میشی. دا میگوایش نیاروم دی دی اروپا لوجاتان تانم شنو به سری ساوقه تسوق زا. روگر چون این کوچک نیست، دموکراتیزاسیس داد دامین سپلی باتا ریالیزاسیس کن. از اول رژیون رو سپت خوبی بیس، دکه تی درو بیس کن. دام خزاس میمی دکی دوست گاو میورو، مالتی نتیوا آرکس. دبولوس میمی داو نیش نورم، چون وارد دارت من بولی کمپرنسیت آرما تبیت، ایموشاویس، ارتمنیت گاوزی آربت، گامو استیلی باس گامو ایت میبا. آخری سعی نترسو تیان دبی داشته تا وظیفه بی، رات خیلی شیو تکوب چون سکوک نپشی. کارت دا گوگونه تند گمره او بیز گامو جو بسه بس ماتی پوزیسیه بیز گام کاره بس دا او پلی بیز داد سوس کی دوورت که میمیدا مالو با کدایی خود خویلا سام کمپرنسیا شی مناطقی لو بیست ویس دا گی سوربت نا کوپیر سامو شود گس مالو بود لیدیز و جنرمن ای وود لایک تو گیو ا فلور تو ایو های رپرزنتیف فور فورین افیرز and Security Policy, Vice President of European Commission, Federica Mogherini. Thank you. Oh, it's okay. I cannot read it anyway. Uh, Irakli, Georgi, Tamar, it's really a pleasure seeing you. Friends, uh, delegates, it's a pleasure, let me say this, uh, seeing so many women, but also so many men in the room. Uh, I think we are all here today uh, because we share two strong beliefs. We believe in gender equality, and we believe that things can change. Gender equality is not simply a moral duty uh, and a matter of uh, social justice, of access, of equal access. Granting the same rights to men and women, the very issue that brings us here today, makes our societies richer and more secure, more stable. This is a matter of development and a matter of peace and security, not purely a matter of principles. When women are empowered, the benefits are perceived by the entire community. When they have access to good education and good jobs, social and economic inequalities are easier to overcome for all. When women are recognized as full and equal citizens, the whole society is more stable and democracies get stronger. It's part of the resilience of our societies, of our institutions, of our countries. For these reasons, the European Union has worked to put women's and girls' rights at the core of the new Sustainable Development Goals. There is no sustainable development without gender equality, as many world leaders stressed at the recent Global Leaders Meeting on Gender Equality and Women's Empowerment in New York last September. The recognition of this very basic fact was a great achievement. It tells us that change is possible and is happening, not always at the pace we would like to see it happening, but it's happening. This is the second reason that brings us here. We know that our action matters. We know that our engagement makes already today a difference for women all around our region and all around the world. Gender equality is a core component of our foreign policy, and even more so in times when terrorist organizations are turning women into slaves in our very same neighborhood. They are afraid of empowered women. They are afraid of girls in school. They are afraid of the voice of women, especially when it's loud and clear, as usually women's voice is. Protecting and promoting this voice is a political and moral duty, and it's also a powerful investment in our own security. 
Gender equality is linked to peace and security in so many ways. It can deter radicalization and it can facilitate state building processes and reconstructions after a civil war. And so many women are key parts of reconciliation in their own societies. The European Union and its member states have a long-standing commitment to the implementation of Security Council Resolution 1325 on women, peace and security in our internal and in our external action. Our support to girls' rights worldwide has already produced important, very important results. In 10 years, 300,000 female students enrolled in secondary education thanks to programs founded by the European Union. Our global network of delegations is helping us to craft specific programs to promote gender equality in all continents, country by country. Still in past years, our commitments did not always translate into strategies. We had many different actions, but sometimes we were lacking the overall picture. Our new framework for gender equality and women's empowerment for 2016 to 2020 builds on this experience and tries to make a step forward. It is a more ambitious, robust, and results-oriented successor to the EU Gender Action Plan for 2010-2015. Its ambition is given by its thematic and regional coverage. It will apply in all European Union external relations and policies, cross-sectorial, including trade, and where relevant, humanitarian assistance, and it will apply geographically in all regions. For instance, the European Neighbourhood Policy Review is already giving particular attention to women's economic empowerment, and as mentioned, let me thank our host, Georgia, for its active contribution to the review in the East. Funds have been provided to gender budgeting in Georgia. In the south of our neighbourhood, a large regional programme on political and economic empowerment of women in the southern Mediterranean region is already ongoing. At the Women's Summit in New York last September, the European Union has pledged to include gender-specific actions in all the EU financial instruments. The EU will allocate more than 100 million euros over the next six, seven years to gender equality, women and girls' empowerment projects. And we must aim even higher. As I said, our action matters, and matters specifically for women and girls in our own societies and around the world. Sometimes even the role models matter a lot to our girls and women in our own countries and around the world. Some people believe there is not much we can do to change social norms that negatively impact on the life of women worldwide. I do not agree. A new law or a local leader or a national leader or an international leader who speaks up against early or forced marriage, for instance, can have a huge impact on their own community can help to pass the message that a girl has the right to choose her own partner. This is a fundamental human right, and no cultural norm can deny it. This issue of cultural relativism is something we will need to tackle in a very serious way, I think, uh, relating to women and girls' uh, rights. Norms and attitudes can evolve if we embrace a cooperative approach with our partners all around the globe. We don't need to look far away to see that. For many countries, in Europe, signing the Istanbul Convention was a little revolution. For many of our countries, the Convention is the first legal text which addresses violence against women as a human rights issue. And let me say personally, I was very proud to be, as still a member of the Italian Parliament, the signatory of the law proposing to the Parliament the ratification of the Istanbul Convention, and if I don't remember, uh, wrong, uh, Italy was one of the first, if not the first, to ratify the Convention. I think that was the kind of action we require from our women and also men in parliaments, in national parliaments, and also in the international community. The European Union will continue working with the Council of Europe to promote the swift adoption and ratification of the Convention by all countries on our continent. We need specific laws to prevent violence based on gender and to help the victims, but prevention and cultural messages, let me stress this, are going to be key. Of course, the road ahead is still very long. I know how hard it can be for a woman to make her way into politics or into diplomacy or into business. We know how difficult it is. 
This is something concerning the all of us inside the European Union and in our neighborhood. This is a common issue which we must address all together. And we know what it needs. For this reason, we have financed projects like Women in Local Democracy in Armenia and a study on women in power and decision making in the Eastern Partnership countries. The preliminary results of the study are an interesting read. They tell us that good quality, affordable childcare is crucial to provide women with more opportunities to work and it can create additional tax revenues that can compensate the subsidy. Still, let me say that childcare is key not only for women, but first and foremost for children. This is a cultural change we also need to interiorize somehow, and it is also key for both parents, also for men. We have to get to the stage where we understand that children are not only mother's children, but parents' children, and that uh, our uh, partners have uh, an equal say, <laughs> which is sometimes difficult to accept, but also an equal responsibility to play. Uh, reading the study tells us also that national policies should identify women as a target group for entrepreneurship. And this is a point uh, uh, that I believe is going to be crucial for the transformation of societies. Women in business, women uh, in uh, entrepreneurship. There is so much that a woman, uh, young women or not so young women, creativity can do for the country's economy and the system. Uh, of uh, the country's economy itself. This is uh, the transformative power uh, that sometimes we refer to uh, concerning the European Union and the neighborhood, but there's such uh, a transformative power in, in women uh, involvement in economy uh, for the societies themselves that we could not even imagine. Of. Well, I guess in this room we can do imagine. This is the right thing to do, to pursue our interests, our collective ones as women and as men, and this is the right thing to do to be coherent to our values. These recommendations are aimed at the Eastern Partnership countries, but they are valid for the whole of us. Our European Union has much to learn on gender equality. Far from perfect, far from perfect. We have much to learn from our cooperation with the region, with the UN system, with the whole international community, with the stories of many uh, women and men that can uh, tell us a lot about uh, creating uh, really uh, equal societies for all. Let's keep working together, so, for the benefit of women, knowing that this will benefit us all as societies. I thank you very much. Thank you, Madam High Representative. And I, I would like to give the floor to UN Assistant Secretary General, UNDP Assistant Administrator and Director of the Regional Bureau for Europe and the Commonwealth of Independent States, Ms. Jihan Sultanoglu. Um, very good morning to all of us. Um, Excellencies, uh, distinguished participants, I am very honored to be here uh, this morning representing Ms. Helen Clark, uh, Chair of UN Development Group and UNDP Administrator. I'm very thankful to the Government of Georgia, uh, in particular the Minister of Foreign Affairs, for organizing this timely and important conference and for inviting the United Nations to be a part of it. We applaud the efforts of the President, the Prime Minister, and the Government of Georgia in placing women's rights and gender equality at the forefront of the national development agenda. Your plans to ratify the Istanbul Convention and progress on the Women, Peace and Security National Action Plan are all testimony to Georgia's commitment to protect women's rights and promote gender equality. The President's declaration of 2015 as the Year of Women in Georgia and the government's continuous support for the introduction of mandatory political quotas to increase women's participation in politics are noteworthy commitments towards prioritizing gender equality in the national agenda. This conference, as we already have heard, uh, is taking place at the most opportune moment for global development. This year is marking very important milestones. 
It is 20 years since the Beijing Women's Conference and the International Conference on Population and Development, which gave us the landmark platforms for action for women's rights and universal access to sexual and reproductive health and rights for all. In September, in New York, uh, world leaders adopted the Sustainable Development Goals, the so-called SDGs, that give us a roadmap for transformative development to the year 2030. The new global agenda reaffirms the pivotal role of women and of gender equality in peace and in sustainable development. Sustainable Goal 5, in particular, spells out the importance of women's full and effective participation at all levels of decision-making. Goal 16 recognizes that inclusive and representative decision-making is critical for promoting peaceful and inclusive societies. With the prominence of gender equality in SDGs, we are better poised than ever to keep gender equality and women's participation in all spheres of public life at the center of the global development agenda. In October, as uh, the High Representative has already pointed out, we observed the 15th anniversary of the UN Security Council Resolution 1325 on Women, Peace and Security. It was an opportunity to reaffirm our commitment to women, peace and security agenda. Against this background, it is heartening that the EU has adopted a new framework for gender equality and women's empowerment in external relations for the next four years to support, in particular, developing enlargement and neighborhood countries. Gender equality, we have heard, is a matter of human rights. It's a matter of sustainable development. And it's a matter of common sense. If all members of society are equally empowered to participate and contribute to development, the sum of our efforts will be greater and have a more profound impact on the world's progress and people's well-being. This conference addresses issues that are fundamental to gender equality, women's political and economic empowerment, women's role, peace and security, and ending violence against women and girls. Women's political and economic empowerment are cornerstones for the achievement of gender equality. Despite much progress, women are still only 22% of parliamentarians worldwide. Only 45 countries have at least 30% women in parliament. To drive the kind of change that will result in gender equality in political representation, we need to remove barriers women face. Gender quotas for political parties can be a powerful vehicle for supporting women candidates and giving them access to campaign funding. It is equally critical to promote women's political participation at the local and municipal levels. We need to empower more women, build their capacities, and promote role models that will encourage more to take on political and public roles in their communities and countries. When it comes to economic empowerment, the challenges are also many. Women face persistent discrimination in employment. The gender wage gap in this region ranges from 7 to 51 percent. Glass ceilings and walls still prevent women from advancing in their careers. Women lack access to assets, land, resources, and credit. Too many women are in informal and part-time jobs and too few are decision makers in public and private enterprises. Again, progress has begun in Europe, where, for example, Norway and Germany have set up quotas for women's membership of corporate boards. UNDP and UN Women support countries to make gender responsive economic policies and budgets. Here in Tbilisi, two weeks ago, UNDP, together with ILO, the World Bank, and the European Union, Union has held a sub-regional conference on employment and inclusion. All partners agreed on the need to address unpaid care work, which is one of the biggest barriers to women's entry to the formal labor force. Again, we also heard about this from uh, Ms. Mogherini. On peace and security, as we are witnessing the largest migration of people since the Second World War and a number of many unsettling events, we see how women and children are exploited and face insecurity 
and all forms of violence, including sexual violence. Women are the source of resilience, and they work very hard every day to build the resilience of their communities and their nations. This is why women must be at the table as equal participants during peace-building efforts and peace-building conferences. Thirdly, sexual and gender-based violence continues to be a key violation of women's rights, in particular in this region. Nearly one in three women in Eastern Europe and Central Asia suffer from sexual and or intimate partner violence. Only one in 10 women who experience violence seek help or report acts of violence to state institutions. Combating violence against women and girls calls for multi-sectoral approaches. UNFPA's support for research on domestic violence has generated indispensable data for evidence-based national plans in Georgia, Armenia, Azerbaijan, and Turkey. Finally, changing behavior is key to combating violence against women and girls. UNFPA and UN Women support advocacy and innovative programming to mobilize men as actors for change. Excellencies, distinguished participants, in addition to taking concrete measures, we must also tackle more amorphous challenges, such as societal attitudes and gender stereotypes that are reinforced in popular media, at home, at school, and at work. Changing these attitudes is essential if we are serious about gender equality. Women's organizations play a vital role in promoting gender equality by articulating women's concerns. Supporting women's organizations is critical. Building the resilience of families, communities, and societies depends on women's participation and men's participation. We very much agree on that. With the adoption of the SDGs, we are at a pivotal moment in advancing our shared development goals and create a better world for today and for the future. In the United Nations, we are committed to working with all our partners to ensure that gender equality is not just a promise on paper, but a reality in all countries, here, in the neighborhood, and beyond. Thank you very much for your attention.